My beautiful friends it's Amanda here today is just gonna be a fun video I'm not reviewing I'm not going in depth and swatching and comparing I am just going to have fun putting some makeup on but with a twist I am going to use my most expensive makeup on one side of my face and my least expensive makeup on the other side of my face I'm gonna do my best to try to make both sides look as similar as possible. I don't know how that's gonna go, but I really just think this will be a fun experiment. I'm wondering how different the look is gonna be. I didn't total these things up. I looked at the individual prices as I pulled them out throughout the day today, but I didn't tally up the full face total for each side. So I'm curious to see what the ratio of cost to appearance or performance really is. I don't have a lot of expectation as far as performance goes. I do feel like I've had just as many great drugstore gems, absolute affordable favorite type of products as I have, you know, really luxury, high-end or expensive must-have type of products. I do feel like at the end of the day I tend to really be in between. I like a lot of in-between stuff. So my expectation is that I'm gonna like both sides equally, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. So how about I zoom you in here? That's the wrong way. How about I zoom in? This is just clean, bare skin. I have some moisturizer on and that's it. Nothing else is on, obviously. And we're doing everything from foundation, brows, mascara. We're gonna go side by side on everything. Not expecting a bunch of dupes, but I am gonna try my very best to make this look as normal a face of makeup as I possibly can. So let's get started. Wish me luck. In the spirit of full disclosure, I do actually have one foundation that is more expensive than this IT Cosmetics Full Coverage Moisturizer, the Bye Bye Foundation. This one that I'm using here is $44. I do have the foundation from House Labs that's $45, but the color was so off from my skin tone and from this ColourPop Pretty Fresh shade that I'm using on the other side of my face that it looked super duper crazy. So I did decide to cheat a little bit, but it's only off by $1. So I feel like, you know, the spirit of the video is still intact by using the $1 cheaper product. And at the end of the day, the results are going to be better. The comparison is going to be better because the shade is so much closer that it really... I think it's just more the more relevant choice. So kind of cheating, but I don't think it's that bad. And when you see these two products side by side, it is crazy how similar they look. Not just the shade match, but also the way my skin looks on both sides. I do think that I have maybe a tiny bit more coverage from the ColourPop product maybe a tiny bit more glow from the IT Cosmetics product, but in general, I feel like these just matched so, so well. It's crazy how similar each side of my face looks, especially for this price difference. Now, as we move into the concealer application, I just want to kind of throw this out there. I know I've mentioned it casually in other videos, but at the time that I was filming this in particular, I was really battling with some changes in my skin because I had made a few skincare changes. Most notably, I changed the concentration of retinol I've been using and my skin has gone through a crazy adjustment period, which is a normal thing to go through with retinols and I am under the care of a licensed esthetician so I'm doing everything by the book. I definitely am not in any danger. I'm not winging it. I don't need advice or anything. I have a professional that's helping me switch up my routine but I mention all of this because as the concealer dries you can really see these big 
patches of skin on my under eye area where it looks like my skin has peeled off because actually it, it a little bit kind of did which it's it's fine I am not injured I am like I said I'm under the care of a professional I'm totally fine but I wanted to mention it because first of all it's incredibly obvious and it's also not the makeup's fault it's my skin just adjusting and freaking out. I'm like shedding like a snake right now. (laughs) But since we're comparing kind of the performance of these products, I thought that was important to let that be known and point that out because it's not the concealer's fault. It's not the foundation's fault. It's my skin's fault. This is, you know, my job. So I can't just wait for my skin to balance back out and not make any videos so I'm just going with the flow I'm just gonna keep pushing actually since the time I filmed this video I've really balanced out and healed a lot and my skin's starting to you know accept these new changes and go back to normal so we're on the right track it's all good next we're gonna do some bronzer comparisons And these two, actually, I was nervous because the Wet n Wild one has a little bit of shine to it and the House Labs one does not. The House Labs Velvet Bronzer is $38 and this Wet n Wild one, I actually found a bunch of different prices as I searched around online. So I just tried to use the most common price. It's typically listed for about $5.99. So we're just going to call it $6 in the interest of round numbers. But the Wet n Wild one actually was a lot more pigmented. So I had to be careful with that one. And I had to go back and build up some more color with the House Lab side. But I think these both look really, really nice. I think if I wore this makeup out and about, no one would be able to tell the difference between those two bronzers. At least, I don't think they would be able to. Now, this beautiful Pat McGrath blush is like a work of art. It is $44, which is so expensive for a blush. It applied really, really nicely. I barely had to do any building up, any blending. I did need to do a little bit more layering up to get the same amount of pigmentation from the Essence the Blush product, but in general, I think they ended up, again, looking pretty similar, especially for this price difference. I think the Essence Blush is quite impressive. Now, we're finally seeing a designer product, this Burberry highlighter. I don't really have a ton of like luxury designer type of makeup as you can tell from the things I've used so far I haven't been using you know hundred dollar products this is definitely a really special really pricey item and I actually got this as a gift one year for I think Christmas or maybe an anniversary from my husband because he knows how much I love pretty pretty highlighters so I don't really use it that often but this is the perfect occasion to pull out your extremely insanely expensive Burberry highlighter. Next up for brows two products that I definitely always use and I basically use these interchangeably. These have a very very similar performance in my opinion. I do think the Glossier Boy Brow maybe gives me a little bit more pigmentation compared to the ColourPop Brow Gel, but in general, you can see them going on here pretty similar in color and performance. Overall, I would say these are practically interchangeable. Next, we're moving on to lips. These are the two most dissimilar appearance-wise that I'm going to use in this video. I just couldn't really find the perfect balance between an exact match and actually using the most expensive and least expensive lip products in my collection. So the color is going to be off here. The finish is actually off here as well. But, you know, I was just kind of doing the best I could. And, you know, when you see it, like this, it's not that terrible. I mean, you can tell it's noticeable that I have two different sides on, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. 
Now for eyeshadows, obviously these two palettes can't be perfectly interchangeable because the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz palette is much larger. But I was honestly very happy and impressed with how closely I could get these two finished eye looks to match up. I did have to do a little bit of creative color mixing and some creative shade layering to get these to match up and at the end of the day I do think that it's obvious the Wet n Wild side isn't as shiny and metallic as the Huda Beauty side but color wise I think they are pretty darn close and honestly if you just took a quick glance you would not know they were two different palettes at least I think most people wouldn't know. Mascara is the very last step and to make it a little more even, I only used the length side of the Huda Beauty mascara since it also has a volume option. And this e.l.f. Lash and Roll mascara is really just a lengthening mascara, so I thought that it would be the most even way to do this little comparison. Overall, I think that these two sides of my face ended up looking really shockingly similar. I did have to get a little creative with mixing some colors, especially on the eyes, but overall I'm really happy with how this turned out and I think this price difference is pretty shocking. Okay, that's it. I finished. I feel like I got each side to look pretty similar, actually way better than I thought I was going to be able to do. As I expected, overall I think both sides look good. For me, there are a couple of clear winners. The less expensive lip product is way, way more comfortable. And even though they're not the exact same color, the finish is also a little bit different. They're both called matte, but the Essence one is more of a satiny finish and it's just way more comfortable. This NARS one feels pretty dry on my lips. So the less expensive lipstick is definitely the winner for me. And as far as the eyes go, the more expensive side, the Huda Beauty side, is a very, very clear winner for me performance-wise. This doesn't look bad at all, but using these side by side, it is immediately clear to me that I much prefer the formulas, the performance of the Rose Quartz palette over this little Wet n Wild one. A lot of the other stuff felt very similar to me. I do think that the performance of the cheek colors on the more expensive side was a little bit better. I just felt like everything blended and laid down really seamlessly. Of course, I did use two different brushes to avoid cross-pollinating the pigments. But in general, I preferred the performance of the more expensive cheeks. But again, I do think that this looks really good too. As far as everything else goes, I really liked the performance of both sides pretty much equally. Complexion, brows, I really, really felt like those were on par with one another. I just slightly prefer the Huda mascara over the e.l.f. one, but that is much more slight preference than the eyeshadow, for example. This was really fun. I feel like this was a fun experiment. I'm really surprised by how similar both sides look. I would love to hear what you thought about this little experiment. What are your preferences as far as your most expensive and least expensive makeup products? I always love to hear what you think about things too, so make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Getting crazy with this hibiscus flavored water. Oh, hello. Okay, let me zoom out. That's way too close. What was that? Let's hope this works. So, <laughs> oh man, can't wait to take this lipstick off. All right, that's it. It's wild and crazy evening. I hope that was fun. I had a good time. Every once in a while I just want to do a fun one, you know? I don't want to be so info heavy. I just want to do something kind of kooky.
I don't know if this counts as kooky, but here we are. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'm glad you're here. I hope you have a good day. And if you're not having a good day, that's all right. Happens to the best of us. Happens to me all the time. So I'm here for you. I totally understand. It's going to get better eventually, if not tomorrow. And we'll be here for you along the way. Okay? So you can just hang in there. I love your face. Bye.